delete it after? Why can't we delete it? Why can't we delete, delete it right, right now? I mean, I don't know how to delete live. it on Facebook. Live. We're live right now? Yeah, we're live right now. Yeah, yeah, oh. it stayed the same. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Hello. Let us know if you can hear us. <laughs> yes. Tell us if you can hear us. And we're seeing some comments of where you're from. It's awesome to see so many people here. P. Cassie Bauer says, Woo! yay. Lisa says, yay. That means yay! it's working. Yay. Thank you guys so much. Kara says, we hear you. Jennifer you're back. says, you're back. Welcome, you're welcome. I think it's working. Okay. Well. Should we get going? Get going. Okay, and you guys can hear us okay? I think people are probably joining back in. Okay, so we can give them a minute to join back in. And okay. Kind of tell them a little more of the introduction. In case Great. Missed it, right? Jesse, go for it. Oh, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. And also, thank you so much for your patience that we've been figuring out our internet and trying to go live. As you can see here, we dress up for this occasion. Um, we're really just excited <laughs> to hang out with our art friends and with you guys and to really honor and celebrate um, the, the men and women that this disease affects. And um, we're grateful that you guys chose to help raise money for it. We're grateful that you chose to take time out of your evening to paint with us. And we're just so grateful that you're here. Great. 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 Keenan's. <laughs> Keenan's doing a great, Keenan, you're doing a great job. Thanks, I'm real sweaty. <laughs> you're doing great. Thank you so much. He was really stressed about that internet, but he's doing really good, you guys. Okay. We'll go again. So, uh, I'm Sarah Cray. I'm Nicole Meeky. Jesse Peterson. And um, we are here to collaborate on this project um, and paint it together in honor of. Um, these people that we know and we just wanted to take a second and say what this meant for us um, so as you guys know if you've been part of our community for a while um, we are value driven and we believe that art has this power to to not solve everything but i think it's a way that it can heal i think it's a way that we can show love and support because when times are really hard or scary um, sometimes we're afraid we're going to say the wrong thing and that leaves us to not saying anything at all sometimes but the beautiful thing about art is it's not about the perfect phrase or saying something that's going to make it all go away it's just a way that we can show up for someone else and let them know that we love them and we're thinking about them and so um, this whole um, project and collaboration was a huge team effort we had every aspect of our business involved in getting this up and going and it would not be possible without your guys' support and your willingness to be excited and create with us um, so we're so grateful for that um nicole i was gonna say is it oh, are we good there's anywhere keep going okay. keep going okay. okay we really apologize i know that we i just saw some comments where the it's a little spotty so hopefully it'll come in and out but mm -hmm. again the whole point of this is i know internet we all I mean, we all, we all sometimes have issues with internet, but the important thing is remember that we're just here to have fun, to paint with you. And so if some of you know that we had, we had the bundles that were made for the supplies that we used, and that was awesome and amazing, one, how quickly that sold out, but to see the support behind this whole event. So it reminded us why, say it again. Oh, sorry. And uh, there's, if you still want to participate, you can get the supplies on the website still. And Oh, um, yeah, individually. Just, not bundled. just yeah. not bundled, but they're still there for individual sale, and you can grab those and paint this project. So even if you can't do this live right now, and you don't have those supplies, grab them later, and you can rewatch this later and paint with us. So, I don't remember what I was saying now. Oh, then no, we have our landing page that we, that... Hadley, our customer service gal, not customer service, our marketing gal can add in the link if you want to learn a little bit more about the whole thing. But what was cool was that our team came up with the idea to honor people in our community and have you guys nominate, whether it was people you personally, we got some nominations from that, or someone that you knew that you wanted to honor them. So I think that was such a beautiful thing to have. And so on our website, I was amazed at how many people, and I got the chills from seeing so many of the names that you all submitted and nominated so thank you your thing yeah but okay cool 
It might be easy for those of you who are just getting into lettering. You can split this with me. Okay. Is write the word that you want to do. And I challenge you to just write it normally. Write it how you would normally write it. Then try and do it in cursive. Not everyone knows how to do cursive, but I want to see if you know how to do it in cursive. No, I don't, not that this is a test or I would know, but I want you to write it in cursive a little bit. Now, after you do that, you might be thinking, one, I can't read that, or sometimes cursive gets really small. So what I challenge you is whatever, if you wanna do it in your regular handwriting or in cursive, try and draw it a little bit bigger and try and go a little bit slower. And when you do that, what you can see is that your lettering might start to take shape a little bit more. Now, as you are doing this, again, I don't want you to look at mine and think mine doesn't look like Nicole's, it's not good enough. I want you to know that this is a personal thing. I always say that lettering is more drawing letters. We're not trying to copy a font. But the big thing is that there's a few tips I wanna give you. One is spreading out the letters is actually a trick. So if I were to write courage again and I spread out each, in between each letter, it kind of gives it this little fancy look can everyone see that I'm doing that? Oh. And just spread it out a little bit more. So what we're doing is we're leaving a little bit more space in between and allows for more breathing room, which actually is cool with the watercolors that it works. So try that. Then if you wanna do one more tip I can give you is if you tend to write straight up and down like I do sometimes, what if you draw yourself a guideline and you angle it or italicize it like we know from a computer and then that will help Courage is a little bit different, but basically what we're doing is if you have a circular shape, instead of a circle, I want you to draw it as an oval at an angle like that. So you're gonna draw it at an angle. Ooh, I like the angle. I never thought about the angles. That makes it really? so much easier, because I have a tendency that my angles go get a little bit wonky ah, mid which word. I, I kind of like cool that about yours. Oh, yeah. stop that. I was gonna say, that's a whole cool personality. <laughs> Okay, so it's okay. But I like the angle uh, tool to use if you want to keep them all the same. Okay, so I, I think I like that the angle better. Ooh, yeah. yeah! I love that. Okay, so those are the two tips hey, I want to give you. And so now the whole thing is maybe a little bit nervous, but again, you're using a pencil. Pick somewhere on your space that you want to write it and use those two things I said. Try and spread it out and maybe angle it. So pick any Ooh, spot. I'm going to use my um, stencil to as like a line, like a ruler. <gasps> That's a good idea. Oh yeah, that may help. Or Actually, no. I'm it, going. I'm going crazy. I'm going if, rogue. If you want to draw it on an angle, maybe you draw yourself an angle. Oh, or like a an curve. arc. Yeah. What you want to do something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I meant. What you. are you surprised about? <laughs> that she's gonna go rogue. Sarah's going rogue. <laughs> and again, if you need to erase it, go for it. I'm go. just making sure that I'm spelling it right. <laughs> I know that is. <laughs> I always get nervous about this, but I'm actually, I'm getting excited. Ooh, you. you got it. Look at you, you're like laying it out. Are there any questions? Okay, how do you make the U to the R connection? I always so get. So go all the way down and then come up on the R. Okay. Yeah, so start, yep, yeah. And like if you've ever done lettering is that you can add the thick lines and thin lines. I like the way it looks thin. Do you, either of you want to do that? Cause I think with the, it's such a thick pen. I'm going to, I'm not going to do the thick line down because it is so thick. Yeah, and my letters are kind of small that I think it would get a little too yeah, difficult I think I did to read. Kind of close <gasps> look at how this it up. is. That like, leave it like that? Yeah. Okay. So I, I would love leave that it. yours is like on a straight line. Good so choice. if you want to <laughs> add some pizzazz to it. You can add some shadows, which I've talked where you're going to think about it where there's a light source. So I'm going to pick the light sources over here and it's hitting the letters and it's casting a shadow on the left side. So on the left side, I'm going to add just a line kind of next to my letters. And this is just a really small kind of like a highlight that's mm. just adding, I guess shadow and highlights are the opposite, but you can think of it in two different ways but it just adds a little bit. So you can do something like that if you would like, or again, you can leave it. And what's cool about this jelly roll is it's thinner. And so you can also add some um, for be able to give a history of family history to the doctor for the first time. Cause throughout, I guess this whole process, she wasn't able to. 
So it was amazing that she could do that. Um, so she wrote, God's hand was on me the entire time, even preparing me for the diagnosis and the decisions that needed to be made. He connected me with my bi biological family so that for the first time in my life, I could give a family medical history when before I had no clue. And so Dana, we are here supporting you. And the awesome thing is that she wrote, she's coming up on nine years of no evidence of this disease. So that is amazing. And we just want you to know, oh, so this, what I wrote is we all have a seat at his table. And so this is going to be coming to you shortly. To Dana. To Dana. The apron. The apron. The apron. <laughs> so, cool. Thank you, everyone. Okay, passing the torch. It looks beautiful. I love it. I love it too. And um, we're going to move on to our watercolor portion. And I just want to ask a quick question. Maybe Keenan will know this. We still are getting a lot of freezing. In the playback, will it still be frozen in the no. playback? It, it will just go smooth. It will go smooth. Wonderful. Okay. It's Wonderful. Awesome. I just wanted to ask that before we keep going. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the watercolor portion of this project. Now we have some loose florals and leaves. Um, and so what I want you guys to do is I want you to grab your paintbrushes, get your cup of water, and we have three colors that we're using. We're using Opera Rose, um, which is one of my favorite pinks from Daniel Smith. It's super vibrant, and um, I just think it's a wonderful color. And we also have our emerald green and our space blue. So we have one paintbrush here, which is our round 10, and we're gonna be doing all of our brushwork with this one paintbrush, which is awesome. And I love this paintbrush because you can get nice, thick lines and actually really thin lines too with just the point of the brush. So it works out beautiful. And another thing that I love about this project is that because it's so loose, it gives us an opportunity to switch the composition around. So no matter where you put your lettering, no matter how big your paper is, big or small, you can adjust this project to paint whatever it is that you would like. Um, so we are going to start, it's always a good idea when you're doing loose florals to start with your biggest elements first, and then you use medium and smaller size elements to work in and kind of fill up spaces and all that stuff. Another one of my favorite thing about flowers, and this is why I just love them, is that like when there's one, our eye can be like, oh, I don't know about that flower. But then when you do like another one and another one and another one and leaves and leaves and there's a branch and there's a little twig and all this stuff, it kind of just comes together for this really full blooming um, composition and painting. So I really wanted us to have that freedom um, and not stress too much about all of that stuff. Okay? Cool. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so get your paintbrushes red. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of my opera Rose. Is that right here? Yes. Did I say that right? Opera pink, sorry. Okay. So with my opera pink, I'm gonna do like a loose circular wash and I'm gonna start on the left hand side here. I usually do not like to put my first flower right in the center of my paper. It becomes really tricky to like balance a composition. So I'm gonna take my 10, I'm gonna take my pink and I'm really just going to create a roundish shape. And you might be like, what do you mean roundish. a roundish shape? And I mean a roundish <laughs> shape. A blob. A blob. I'm literally creating a blob. Okay? Nice. Nice and loose. Yeah, thank you. And then while it's still wet like this, I'm gonna grab more of this gorgeous pink and I'm just gonna kind of drop it in. I'm gonna drop it in close to the center. I can drop it along the sides. I'm not being too nitpicky here of where I'm putting these things. And don't worry, it's gonna come together, you guys. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> so that is our first flower. Very nice, yep. Thanks, I need that encouragement. You're doing great. Both of you guys are doing judging. great. <laughs> I can see it, I can see you like look back at it. I'm like, Jesse, you're doing a good job. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna do um, another flower, and this is why I love this paintbrush so much is because it works so great with this shape. It's kind of like um, a dahlia. Do you guys know mm -hmm. those flowers? How they're kind of like long and pointy and a little bit curly. They're gorgeous and I love them so much. So I'm going to start by grabbing that same pink and then kind of off to the side, maybe a little bit on the right. I'm gonna start in the center and I'm just gonna do 
one little brush stroke and it's kind of like if you want to kind of shape it and fill it in you can like so like an eyeball shape as Keenan would say oh kind of like the diamonds <laughs> on your face <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yes like the little gemstones that we're wearing so or you can do a single brush stroke if you want and let it be a little bit wonky Ooh, I like that I like wonky because the truth is if you guys actually see the specific petals of a dahlia they actually are a little bit wonky and some of them kind of curl a little bit bigger and then even if you want at the at like the tail like most outer rim you can make them a little bit longer and maybe have a little bit of a curl to them you know what i mean mm. like because dahlias have that have you seen this dahlias? yeah they do have a curl of oh i like that and then you can kind of work it around the lettering too depending on where your flowers <gasps> that, that looks good. good yeah okay now this is fun i mean it was fun before but i, don't know, I just got really excited <laughs> and so these are like i would say these two flowers are the anchor is the anchor of our painting so i'm going to essentially recreate those two flowers across my composition and then i'll go back in with leaves um, and smaller elements to fill it up so this is where i'm going to like let you guys loose and you guys decide where you want to put your flowers and leaves now a couple um tips that i can give you is one thing is whenever i do large flowers i try not to have them line up um, horizontally or vertically so if I do one more big flower right on top of this one it's going to create an implied line in my composition and that's not terrible but sometimes implied lines in our composition can throw our viewers eye so what I want to focus on is kind of um, having it I always forget this word um asymmetrical nope 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 Serendipitous. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> it's worse when people keep suggesting. Like, uh, well, I'm putting it in the middle of these two, not right above. What's central? That? Tipsy. No, it's going to come to me later. It's okay. Lost in the sauce. That's, <laughs> that's it, Keenan. <laughs> I'm lost in the sauce. Bruce Willis. Okay, I'm going to do another, like, big loose flower up here. Bruce Willis, really? How is that helpful? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you just want to die hard, that's all. And one other um, tip that I want to give you guys is as we're putting in these larger elements, put them closer together than you might think that they need to be. I've noticed that when it comes to florals and putting the flowers next and leaves to each other, our brain likes to separate them out and create spaces, but that is kind of defeating our purpose of making it feel full. So go ahead and let it feel like tight and next to each other. Okay, I'm gonna do um, like more a dolly one over here. Maybe I don't mind to just go off the page up here. Yes, it's always a good idea to have it go off the page. I was gonna explain why, but <laughs> I just decided to leave that. <laughs> It's just a good idea to go off the page. Off the, off, out, out of the square, out yes, of the box. Out of the box. But and then it doesn't feel like it's contained, right? Like it feels like the growth is just happening beyond the right, measure yeah, of good. our... Almost like we're just cropping in on this like whole plane of like flowers. And cropping leaves. in, that was a good way to say it. Yeah. Mm, that's what I was looking for earlier, cropping. Cropping. That's not the word, Keenan. Central. I'm still trying to think of the word that I don't even know you needed. And then if you guys would like and you want to add a little bit of purple to your flowers to get, I always love to add little hints and of other hues and paint later. I'm asking you to um, like really go for it. Go for it. Go for it. it. We're doing it. Yes. And then I realized afterwards that that acrylic watered down doesn't like wash out like the watercolor. So I really had, was committed. You were committed. You did it. And I'm going to do another like circular one over here. Mm -hmm. And again, try and make them a little bit closer than what you might be comfortable with. I'm going to drop in some of that color. Remember to drop in some of that color in that kind of circular flower, even the acrylic 
it's doing it. And I'll, we'll go back to that after it dries and I'll show you how to utilize that. Drop it in, in the middle? Yeah, just like here. So you see how this whole area is wet? Mm -hmm. I'm taking this and I'm kind of dropping in like long thin lines like this. Okay. Like boop. Is there some whispering out here? My magnificent gem was pointing off out like this. <laughs> yeah, it was a unicorn like horn. Like a unicorn horn. Yeah, <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna do another Dahlia. You can also, if you feel more comf confident with a different type of floral, go ahead and put that in here instead. Just because I'm doing these two kind of floral shapes, that doesn't mean that you are limited and you can't go off script and do your own thing. So if you're like, I actually am really good at doing daisies, do daisies. That would be like, this whole thing in daisies would be gorgeous. Are there pink daisies? Yeah. There's aster, like that's Gerber? purple. There's like kind of, like, kind of pinkish. Oh yeah, there's mums, there's, there's, it exists. I feel like the only flower I'm really good at painting is tulips because of the, the tulip one time festival. we did the tulip festival. But I'm like, would a tulip work? No, because that's not straight. This is, I feel like this is straight on. What would a tulip be like that? I don't know. That would actually be tricky. Yeah, no. Sorry, Jesse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me overthink it for it all at all. <laughs> Okay, so now that we have like a good idea of where we're putting in our florals and where those are, you can start putting in some green leaves. Now, oh, don't I stress. I not leave space. That's okay. So can <laughs> I talk about yours? Yep. So Nicole uh -oh. like went for this, right? And she was just like flowers all day, all the way. <laughs> and that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. So. When we start something and we get into it and we realize, oh shoot, I didn't leave space for this. You can either do one of two things. One, you can just commit to this and just be like, I'm actually really cool with making this just flowers because that will be beautiful, trust me. The other thing that you can do is you can think, okay, I didn't leave space to do large leaves up here. So if I were to introduce them down here all of a sudden, that might feel a little bit off compositionally. Mm. So now think about smaller elements that you can add in there because there's definitely room for you to do little small leaves. Maybe you would focus more on those like long like branches with little leaves coming off that are just kind of more detail lines instead of full thick leaves is how I would move forward with something like this. Mm, okay. Also, you're a wonderful artist and I trust whatever choice that you make. So you don't have to listen to me. No, but that is really good tips. Okay. I was wondering, I was like, dang, you're, I'm doing them really close together. I mean, I did say to do them really close together, but I meant like touching like this. She said closer than you're comfortable with is yeah. what I remember. I you did it, you did it. You did it right, Nicole. <laughs> no, I love it, okay, sweet. Okay, so now at this stage, I feel pretty confident about my flowers and my placement, and I'm gonna start introducing leaves. I love painting leaves. There's just something about them that are, it's just like, fills me. So I'm going to take my round 10 brush and I'm going to grab some emerald green and I'm going to mix a little bit of space blue in there because I just love mixing other colors in with green. I just feel like it adds so much to it. Oh yeah, that's a pretty green. Isn't that a pretty green? I mean, I feel like when you make space blue with like anything, <clears throat> it creates such a gorgeous color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in my larger leaves. So I'm just going to do single brush stroke like so. And then this is the beautiful thing about watercolor. Let's say my goal was to do a single brush stroke leaf and I didn't like how it came out. Guess what? Reshape it. Wait, Not what? a problem. So just because you do a single stroke leaf, that doesn't mean you have to commit to that shape, whatever it is. You have the freedom to reshape and realign things all the time. So now this is where you need to look at your painting, your placement of the flowers, your placement of how they kind of interact with each other. And then that's where, whenever there's like larger spaces, that's where you're gonna to wanna to put your leaves. And try and have them going different directions. So maybe some kind of coming up here, here. And when it's nice and wet, go ahead and drop in some of that other color. Like just to see, let it move, let it bleed. 
let's say you drop in a color and you're like, that is way too dark for this composition. Take a paper towel, lift. It'll just lift right out, so it's not a thing. You're thinking about, what are you thinking about, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to go with this. I'm thinking about, I know I'm gonna get all mixed media on this, and so yeah. I was trying to decide like, where that was gonna happen, but I'm just gonna go Oh, okay, yeah. So like, later, like, I'm like that. It doesn't matter, it's gonna be great. Okay. Ooh, I like that, it's that little squiggle on that, that's cool. So one way that I really like to approach my leaves as well is I like to like do like kind of a rough brush stroke, like kind of loose, and then I'll take a... I just love dropping the paint in there. I always forget how much I like watercolor until I paint with you. <laughs> I'm like, see, this isn't bad, this is fun. I love that there's an element of like um, surrender you have to have with watercolor. I and was gonna say surprise. <laughs> surprise. I guess that's a better way of saying it. <laughs> I think it's more just about recognizing that you can't control it all. And instead of fighting that, it's like, problem solving on the go and embracing what happens. I feel like this is a lot of insight into your personality. <laughs> when I think about how I approach a problem and how you do it, you're like, oh, let's just go for it. It's fine, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I'm like, well, we can work on layers if we mess up, we can put another layer on it. Like, it's just different. I'm gonna do some like purple leaves too. Cause why not? Are leaves purple? Sometimes. Sometimes. I have purple bushes. You have purple bushes? Mm -hmm. What, well, what are beautiful. they called? I have uh, purple bushes. <laughs> <laughs> I have six, but only three have survived. Purple bushes. Scientific name. Yeah. <clears throat> now, for the florals that are dry here, yes. what we're going to do is just slight details to really kind of bring it together. Because right now, it's kind of just looking like... Um, a blob? A blob. I mean, mine look like blobs. Mine looks like a blob. Blob isn't bad. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I picked up more opera pink. We want this to be a darker value than whatever it is that you have on your um, floral. And I'm going to do thin lines, kind of going around it. Ooh. And then you're going to kind of like work the thin lines towards the center. It's what? It's a peony. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah? I feel like in the south we say peony. No. Which is the yeah. correct or way. Or what did I say? Do I, am I thinking of it wrong? Peony? Peony? Peony. I don't know. I don't know. I always say things wrong. I just started to embrace it now. I used to apologize, and now I'm like, you know what? It's fine. I say sepia wrong, okay? <laughs> Wait, how do other people say it? Sepia. That's weird. Is that, isn't that the right way? Yes. Yeah. Is it? Sepia? Sepia is the right way of saying sepia. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, no, I don't believe I'll accept that as your opinion, but I don't want to disagree. He knows. Does he? I'm going to do detail lines on this. Gosh, I totally am in love with how this. Flower yeah, the layering. Out. I was going to say how you have the different layers. Because did you do another layer of the... Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. I'm going to do some hot pink in there, too. So keep going. And I know that sometimes we have a tendency to kind of overwork, but that's the beauty of this type of project, is the more that you put into it, the kind of like more full it feels, and it just keeps adding. So this is a really wonderful project where if you just want to explore shapes, if you want to explore different mark making, pen supplies, all of these things. <laughs> I got crazy, I like it. <laughs> it's yeah. just a great way for you to um, like play, and the more you add, just the better it becomes. It feels like a doodly kind of mood. Yeah. And oh. I wanted to introduce other colors in there besides 
pink. We're celebrating pink because pink is a color for breast cancer and we really wanted to, to utilize that. But we wanted to add some other colors in there too for fun because maybe your friend or whoever you're thinking about when you're making this is just like, like screen better. We'll do some leaves, you know? So. <laughs> um, I think we can move into the um, mixed meter portion. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yay, where's our flags? <laughs> Am I your hands? <laughs> I might need to dry this a little bit really fast before. Is that cool? Oh yeah, we need the. So yeah, if you have I'll any wet it. areas, just try to dry them. If Could they, we like blot them? Maybe I don't know what Let's happens do with it. it. I had quite the puddle. What do you do when you have a puddle with? You water? still blot it. I mean, oh, you, yeah. whenever you blot, it tends to lift the color out. But oh, okay, let's blot it, Nicole. Do you need more paper Yours out? totally looks like a dahlia. It does. Yes, I love the. Yeah, the, the movement yeah. in it. It feels like it's... Well, when you said I could squiggle, then I got excited. <laughs> You're like, I'm all about that squiggle. Yep. Ooh, I like how it looks like when I blot it. Okay, yeah. Cool. All right, so I'm just going to go for it. So okay. what you were saying about composition, yeah, like find some areas that you want that are... I'm trying to, like, does that make sense? Because like, I kind of would intuitively do this. <laughs> <laughs> like some areas I want to feel heavy because uh -huh. this is a dark color. So uh, uh, we're right there. Now this takes a little while to dry, so you gotta be Ooh. mindful of that if you're wanting to go back in on some area later, but other than that, just get crazy. Excuse me, sir. Okay, and when you feel like you've got it adequately, <gasps> peel and reveal. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay, so you can keep doing that on the edges if you want it, like this guy, I want that one to be like prominent right there, so I'm gonna go for it like more centrally. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And I like that this stencil has like these dots too and this like edge right here that you can like add a flower mm -hmm. just coming off here. Yeah, so you can change it up. Where do I want to put this? I want to put that right here. Here. Thank you. And uh, sometimes I'm really concentrating and I have to remember to take a breath. So if this is your moment. the can i nope i'm gonna use my paintbrush can you use paintbrush with stencil yes better? i was gonna say now i've got these like heavy areas but yeah. i kind of want to have some other places with this color in there yeah i think some dots would be fun like in this mm -hmm. composition with that i'm a fan of dots i like the dots um i'm having so much fun i don't even know what time it is or where we're at in our programming so I know I had a good time. We're doing already. good. <laughs> That's when you lose track of time, you know I'm it's like, a good sign. Am I supposed to share something else already? Oh my gosh, I don't know what's happening. Because we're I have a I have one to read too, and I'm, I want to read that. I want to make time for that, but I also want to add a couple dots here. So, Elizabeth, you tell me when I need to stop. <laughs> yeah, this is so fun. This is my first time actually using stencil butter. Okay, I love it. I. It's like a very different. So uh, I relaxing. I have kind of a half weird shape going on there, and I thought it looked a little. Oh my gosh, the I, pearl white. No, you know what? Water you could do a watercolor water wash, water like you're water. saying. Yeah. And you turn it like this, it looks like your gems on your face. Like, so <laughs> you can do it. You can do the whole face underneath it. <laughs> Just add a little gem crown onto oh your gosh. painting. So pretty though. This is pearl white stencil better. And we also have Stardust Shimmer Butter. Oh, is that one out? Yeah, yeah so that was a new one. I have, my yeah. sample said it was like a production sample, so I didn't know I could talk yeah. about that. Yeah. It's yeah. out in the world now? Y'all, yeah. yeah. it's good, it's good. What color is it? I think the Stardust one? Yeah. There's four colors. Is that good? Yes. Oh. Yes. Platinum, Pearl White, Marcusite, and champagne. Marcusite? Yeah, this is this, that gold one is champagne. Mm. But they're more flipped, like um... Gosh, I love that you just went all flowers. Yes, I know, it's like a, oh, it's like, like fireworks for flowers. Yes. Yes, it's kind of, it's a little finer than stickles. So okay. an adult mm. version of stickles Can I see that little piece of paper? Mm. <laughs> 18. Kids, board games, card games, snowball fights, and so much more. I also remember her wigs, her weight loss, and that she never complained about it. Mm -hmm. Thank God that cancer care is so much better now. I'm sure the years have taken some of my memories, but I will always think of her in her fight with breast cancer, Terry. Mm -hmm. um, 
I liked the imagery that she painted for us um, for her Aunt Alice. And even though this has been happening in her family, um, she had a rock and an example and someone to look towards. And, um, and uh, it just... It just made me think about how she's she's landed on these moments and 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 thought about these memories of her um, and and if it seems like you know she was living in those moments and I think um, whenever we're we're challenged with hard times um, like you said like art can be healing and it can be a way for us to um, share and care and and for me art can be a way for me to have like a uh, a mindful moment to be in this moment um, and and for someone who struggles with anxiety and like getting through hard things like that um, sometimes just taking a breath is the only way that I can be in this moment like right now and take one moment at a time and so um, I made this one as a reminder for us to just take a breath and be in the moment this one very moment is all that we have um, and everything else is a bonus right like we just take That's it right. every day so um, this is what I wanted to give Theory because of that and I even thought that the blue and the cyanotype and everything kind of was reminiscent of blueberries mm. and so um, thank you for sharing your story and your courage and your strength thank you this beautiful paint bundle um, you can get it just till the end of the day yep and it comes in the bag yeah it's cute little bag and the first 50 get it in this um, breast cancer bag that's a great carrier for them. Can you show me the bag again, Jesse? Vanna White it. Am I doing it? No, you, you gotta, gotta move your hand. Oh, I was just thinking like homecoming wave. I don't know. <laughs> homecoming wave. Vanna White. <laughs> well, awesome. Um, let's all hold up our paintings. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You're doing it. <laughs> <laughs>